right, we want to look at the spanning tree protocol and port costs. So I have a bunch of switches that have just barely come online. They're all connected together. And the first thing they do is they negotiate and they figure out which switch is going to become the root switch. The root switch is the one with the, is either based on the MAC address or the priority, but then they decide it. And then based on individual port costs, they determine what the fastest route through the this network of switches is in order to determine a tree that will be the most efficient. So if we look at these switches right here, we can tell immediately which switches are not root switches. Any switch that has uh, one of its interfaces turned off is not the root switch or root bridge. So S4, S2, S5, and S6 are definitely not. And then you look at S3. S3 has all of its interfaces turned on. However, the one going from S3 to S2 is, well, off. So we know that that one, S3, is not the root bridge. So we know that then, then that S1 is the root bridge, and we can verify that by going in here and going in Enable and Show, show Spanning Tree. We can see that this bridge is the root bridge. Other switches here, we can see what the cost is. All of the lines here are fast Ethernet lines. So a fast Ethernet line has a cost of 19. So I go and enable this and show spanning tree. I can see that the cost is 19. That is the cost to get back to the root bridge. And we can see which port I go through and what the address of the root bridge is. If I go to another one, you see if you go from S1 to S2, it is a green line all the way down. And then from S2 to S3, or S2 to S4 is a green line. So we'd assume that the path is all the way from S1 to S2 to S4. So that's how S4 gets back, is through S2 to S1. All right, so we click on S4, and we look at the cost right here. Enable, show spanning tree, and because it has two different fast Ethernet lines, we'd expect it to be 19 plus 19, which would give us a cost of 38. Now, if we decided to change these lines, so I change this line right here to a gigabit Ethernet, and this one over here to a gigabit Ethernet, and this one right here from gigabit Ethernet, and the one down in the bottom to gigabit Ethernet, then suddenly we have a gigabit Ethernet all the way from S1 to S2 to S4. Well, how that affect things? Before, the fastest way to get from S1 to S4 was definitely down through S2, so it should be the same. But now we're going to go ahead and change the S4 to S5, so that it's faster to go that way rather than go from S2 to S5. So we'll change that to Gigabit Ethernet, and this one also to Gigabit Ethernet. And we'll change the bottom one over here to Gigabit Ethernet, and the bottom one over here to Ethernet. Gigabit Ethernet. All right, now we have a path from S1 to S2 to S4 to S5 to S6, all Gigabit Ethernet. And if we speed up the span tree recalculation, we notice the path changes. So now they're all going S1, S2, S4, S5, S6 to get there. And the only switch that doesn't use that path is S3 because apparently it is still faster to go from S1 directly to S3 than it is to go all the way around. So let's take a look at S2. If we look at this one right here, we show spanning tree, we can see now the cost is four. The cost for going through a gigabit ethernet is four. If we go down to the next one, we'd expect it to be eight. So show spanning tree, and we can see the cost is eight. The cost to this one right here on the bottom should be 12. So spanning tree. So it's 12. And then the last one over here, S6, should be 16. And we can see the cost is 16. Now, if we were to go from S6 up to S3, the cost would become, well, a little bit more. It would become 20 
unfortunately, S1 to S3 is just 19, so it's much faster. But you can see how the costs affect how the tree is built, starting from the root bridge, counting the costs all the way around, and there you go.